Hello my dears and welcome back to my corner of the internet. I'm Shannon and today I've got a book talk video to share with you guys and I'm really excited about this one. Today we are talking about The Paul Bears Club by Paul Tremblay. This is the second book I've read from this author. Um, I have a book talk on this channel about his novel um, The Cabin at the End of the World which I enjoyed. So I had since then been wanting to go back and read more, especially um, A Head Full of Ghosts. That sounds really good to me, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. But when I saw he had a new one coming, I grabbed it right away. So, you guys, this book was a treat. It's not going to be for everybody, but I thought this was such a interesting read. It's so uniquely laid out which I'll show you now in a second and it was just it's unlike anything else I've ever read. I guess you would classify this as a horror novel although there's not really a lot of parts that are scary. There are some parts that gave me anxiety <laughs> but not scary as such. This one's gonna be a tough one to talk about because well you'll see you'll see. But, um, so this might be a short video, but let's just get on into it. First of all, I gave this five stars on Goodreads. Halfway through, I was like, this, this is a five star read for me. I know it. And it was, boy, was it. Okay, so we start off, the entire book is actually a manuscript that's been written by a man named Art Barbara. But right off the bat, the first sentence, he tells us that's not his real name. So we're like, okay, so we start reading about art. The contents of this book range from like the mid to late 80s when art's a teenager to like 2017, I think, when he's in his 40s. So we meet art, like I said, mid to late 80s, I think, I think late 80s. And um, he's 17 years old. He's had back problems his whole life. He has scoliosis. He's very tall, very thin, like painfully thin. It's something that bothers him. And um, kind of a loner, doesn't really have any friends to speak of. And so one day he decides he's going to start a um, extracurricular club, the Paul Bearers Club. And it's kind of exactly what it sounds like. Um, you know, the idea behind it is to, if somebody passes away and they don't really have any family or much family, the club will go to the funeral home and be the pallbearers for the service. So he starts to try to get it going. Two people show up. They only come once. It doesn't go well. The next time he decides he's going to put flyers up everywhere and try to recruit some people. Um... And one girl shows up. Her name's Mercy. Um, she doesn't go to the school or anything. He thinks she's probably a little older than he is, but she shows up. She's a little she's a little different this one. She's very intrigued by the whole process. She wants to take photos of the bodies, which the guy from the funeral home eventually he's like, you know what, just don't do it during the service, basically, is what I'm gonna ask you. Otherwise, knock yourself out. Um, and art is instantly intrigued by her. So basically the rest of this book, like I said, goes through from his teen years to his mid to late 40s and focuses on his relationship, his friendship with this woman, Mercy is her name, Mercy Brown. Now what's really interesting about this and what initially really caught my attention is that so it's written, the, whole, the entire book is a book that Art has written. He calls it a memoir, but as you read, let me find a good example here. As you're reading through the book, the entire thing, the entire thing, I don't know if you can see the red there and the arrows and whatnot more over here. The entire thing is annotated by the girl Mercy. So as we're reading, and then at the end of each chapter, there are pages of her notes on what she's just read in that chapter that just ended. 
And what we soon come to discover as we're reading is that Art and Mercy have very, very different ideas about what transpired throughout their friendship. Whether that's a memory that Art describes, whether he says the color of something, just so many things. He'll say something's blue and she'll say no it was green or vice versa. And so as we're reading, we're getting Art's story, we're learning he's probably a reliable narrator, but then as we're reading Mercy's annotations, you know, there's no way for us to know if she's a reliable narrator either. So now we've got these competing unreliable narrators. <laughs> and I just thought that was such an interesting way to write this story. Now I'm not really going to get into any spoilers for this because it would be too difficult to try to tell you the entirety of this story would be too difficult because it's mostly a lot of conversation, a lot of back and forth. One thing that Mercy corrects every time Art calls this book a memoir, she crosses it out and writes novel. That's how off the mark she thinks he is with his memories. Now, so to hear that you'd think it's kind of a coming of age story, which it is. It's, it's a coming of age story for sure. But a little bit of it, which is a lot of it, but I'll tell you what, I saw somebody on Goodreads describe it as, picture you're in a movie theater watching a coming of age movie. And in the next theater, there's a vampire story playing and you can kind of hear it. That's such a great way to describe that. It's also a bit of a vampire story. <clears throat> and I say a bit, even though that's, it's, that's the umbrella over the entire book. A vampire story. Because Art thinks Mercy is one. And Mercy is very adamant for us to know that she is not. The last, when we get to the final chapter, again, no spoilers here, but uh, when we get to Art's final chapter and Mercy has, you know, scratched it up and corrected all the things, the final bit of the book is her, from her, it's her notes in the red pen, and it's probably like 10 pages. And those final pages, you guys, once we learn <laughs> how it ends, how Art's story ends, the last two pages, I don't think I took a breath. <laughs> I was holding my breath. I was, I didn't know, I didn't know what was going to happen. And like I said, there's no spoilers here, but in those last two pages, I still don't even know. Like I, it ends in such a masterful way that took my breath away that I don't even know what to say about it. And I don't even know what it says about the whole rest of the story entirely. <laughs> but I loved it. I loved it. Instant five star. Loved this. I will read everything this man writes from here on out. I'm going to go back and read the ones that came before it. This book is so good. It's so good. Like I said at the beginning though, it's not going to be for everyone and I do know that. But if any of this sounds intriguing to you, definitely give it a try. Definitely pick it up. Um, because for me, this was, this was just perfect. It was just perfect. I don't, I can't think of a single thing I'd change about it. So there you go, you guys. That's <laughs> my brief thoughts on the Paul Bearers Club. Cause like I said, a lot of it is just conversation back and forth. You can't really go through plot point by plot point in any coherent way that would make any sense to you without having read it. So, but I had to share my thoughts and let me know in the comments down below if you have read this, what you thought of it. Love to hear your thoughts. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys again real soon. I think coming up next will be uh, probably a bit of a vlog. <laughs> That'll probably come on Monday. Anyway, take care guys. Bye.